welcome to the show. I'm Peter Whitlaw. Now, before I introduce my guest this week, just a note about our forthcoming national conference. Yes, it's that time of year again. Uh, it's happening on April the 20th in London. I do hope you can come. We've got great speakers. We've got David Starkey. We've got Richard Tice, uh, Rafe Hadel Mancou, Philip Kisley, Emma Webb, all, the whole team. Uh, so it should be a great day. It's called State of Emergency. That is the theme uh, this year. If you want to come, best thing to do is to either go to the link under this video today or just go to the website newcultureforum.org.uk and uh, you can find details where to get tickets there. So I do hope to see you on uh, April the 20th. Now, uh, there is a case coming up in Australia in a matter of weeks, in fact, which is enormously important, has huge implications for women, women's rights and women's safe spaces across the world. Uh, my guest, very pleased to say, is the woman who is in, right at the centre of this case, and her name is Sal Grover. Hello, Sal. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, you're here in, in uh, London for a few days, aren't you? Here for a week. Yeah. Yep. I came over here because basically the censorship on this issue yeah. in Australia is very chilling. Mm. And I like, basically they talk about the gender issue very positively all the time, but they do not accurately report any of the pushback or anything happening. And I was like going crazy. I was like, I, people need to know what is going on. Yes. And so I was like, well, airplanes exist. I'll get on an airplane and I'll come to what's called Turf Island. And everyone has been really welcoming here. I didn't realize this. We are called Turf Island, mm. aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I should just add, the, the case, which I think is coming up on the 9th of April, mm -hmm. uh, the, the actual the name is it's an odd name for something that's so important, but it's Tickle versus... Giggles, yeah, isn't it? it? Now, yeah, you, are, it you are the head of Giggles. Yes. Can you explain what that is? So basically in 2018, 2019, I got the idea and developed and created a social networking app exclusively for women. So it's basically where women could go to find roommates, freelance work, you know, like a Twitter style um, forum uh, with lesbian dating, emotional support. I mean, you could like lots of different things Like you could connect with women to become pen pals if you wanted to like just... We tried to think of so many different um, things that women would want to connect, like women all around the world. And when I was coming up with this idea and developing it, I had absolutely no idea that there was any question, any controversy over what a woman is. I thought that this was pretty established fact. Yeah. It just never even occurred to me. I was still, I think, a little bit in the Me Too bubble. Right. So I was thinking, you know, just, you know, this had been sort of this movement about women having boundaries and it, sort of, we were, I was very influenced by that. And basically on the 7th of February, 2020, we were just on the app store and Google play, just doing beta testing. So making sure it worked, like there were still some bugs to iron out. And what I've now come to know were trans rights activists found the app and thousands of them invaded it they left us one star reviews calling saying transphobic and bigoted calling me a turf i'd never heard that word before yeah basically they put us in an algorithmic black hole that we could never get out of so we, we were cancelled right out of the gate like we had a launch plan or media that had agreed to help out with the launch who was celebrating going this is going to be fantastic have literally never responded to an email from me since from the moment i was accused of transphobia so I was basically introduced to this sex versus gender identity, what they call as a culture war, but it's actually a, a really real thing that's happening with really real consequences and victims and, and destroying real people's lives. Now, the, the, the genesis of this particular case is this person called Tickle. It's Roxanne Tickle. Mm -hmm. And this is a guy who's identifying as a woman. Mm -hmm. how, how have you ended up actually in court with this person? Okay, so basically in, um, on the 20th of January, uh, 2022, I received an Australian Human Rights Commission complaint alleging gender identity discrimination against both Giggle, the app, and me personally. Yeah. And so I immediately, you know, I got a solicitor. I was like, you know, I'm obviously petrified. Um, and we went back and forth. And 
with that, basically us saying, you know, this is for females, this person is not a female, um, by their own admission, essentially, because the moment someone says that they are a trans woman, that the only prerequisite is male. So yeah. it's an admission that they're male. Um, I didn't know that this person had a gender identity, so to speak. Um, basically, he had onboarded the app and he, I had removed him. I don't remember doing it. Thou as I said, thousands of men would attack it constantly. Um, and so it, it wasn't an event to remove this person or anything. It, he wasn't unique in any way, shape or form. Um, and so like, I couldn't have known that he had a gender identity. You know what I mean? Right, it was yeah. just, he, I just, I would have seen a picture of a man because basically to have a female only online space, we had to be like, well, how do you keep it female only? We had an onboarding, um, um, system where you would take a selfie, AI would assess the selfie. We had human eyes behind the screen all the time because you would never rely completely on technology. We had it set to 94% accuracy and it worked. Basically it, women would not get knocked back unless they had a really pixelated photo or really you know, blurry or something. Um, and occasionally a man would get on, but our thought was rightly or wrongly, we'd rather kick a man off, like remove a man, the, the odd man who got through, yeah. than have a woman be denied access to it. So he did get on that way. And then I would have seen him because I just would have seen a picture of a man and gone out. Happened all the time. So in the Australian Human Rights Commission basically is a place where you can like clear up and settle an issue before it goes to court. So you can go to conciliation. Um, but the conditions for settlement were that I would have to let him on the app. I'd have to let all men who claim to be women on the app. So he made a complaint then? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So yeah. it was a complaint, yeah. Um, that I would have to go to sex and gender education, which could only re -education. be... Re-education. Well, it could only be re-education yeah. because <laughs> yeah. I know about yeah. sex and gender. Yeah. I know about it very well. I actually think I could teach the class better than the people <laughs> who are currently teaching it. Um, and that I would have to moderate the content on the app so not so that men who claimed to be women weren't offended by what women were saying. And I was just like, I'm not going to agree to any of these things. And also when I got the complaint, I was 15 weeks pregnant. So when we were going back and forth trying to settle this, um, obviously I was just getting more and more pregnant. And by the time I said, absolutely no way, I was like second trimester, I think. Yeah. And so mm. going into third. And so basically if it can't be settled in conciliation in the Australian Human Rights Commission, they advise the applicant that they can file in federal court and they've got 60 days to do it. So he did on the 60th day, he filed in federal court. So I got a barrister legal team. We were already, we were getting ready to respond. So this is a, um, like May, June, I think of 2022. Then one week before I gave birth, he withdrew the case. And so we were shocked because we were like, you know, did we just have a, basically a win? Like we stood our ground um, you know, can we move on with our lives? Right. And then in December, 2022, he refiled. I found out about it on New Year's Eve. You um, can do that then, can people can refile? Well, yeah, so he refiled on that initial claim. So he was now 260 days or something out of time. So he actually had to get permission from the court for it to go ahead at this right. point. Um, I found out about it on New Year's Eve because the Guardian newspaper in Australia published an article about it and I was sent it going, oh, you're going to court again. I hadn't been served yet. I had no right. idea. Right. So like, you know, all of my hopes and dreams for 2023 went out the window yeah. and I was like, okay, yeah. that's what my year is going to be like. Um, and so in April last year, um, the federal court said, yes, it can go ahead. And they, one of the reasons why they've allowed it to go ahead was because it's in the public interest, which has been my frustration with the censorship because I was like, this is going ahead because it's in the public interest. So I think that the public deserves to know about it. But then if no media in Australia will speak to me, they won't even speak to him. It's not like, you know, we've got the ABC, which is, you know, our version of like yeah. BBC, and they are very, very captured. They are all in on this issue. Like they, they are going to go down with the ship at this mm. point. Like they are beyond like the band playing while Titanic sinks. Like they are in the yes. kitchen making yes. breakfast, thinking they're going to have a meal the next day while the ship sinks. But usually they will write any article either praising the trans and gender diverse community or articles saying about how oppressed they are, how marginalized, you know, these rights, nothing. They will not report on this. And I just find it 
incredibly suspicious. I'm like, why is no one bringing attention to this case that was specifically allowed to happen because it's in the public interest? So basically, we here we are, uh, you know, well, coming up two weeks' time. Mm-hmm. And, um, so he's basically uh, suing you, isn't it? That, yeah, for discrimination. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. exactly. The thing is, is that from what I can see, and you've explained this before, but it's it's crucial, isn't it? This case brings together essentially two different uh, approaches is a nice way of putting it, isn't it? <laughs> two different definitions or conflicting legal situations. Yes. One is a convention, isn't it? And one is basically an international convention, mm-hmm. isn't that right? Yes. And one is the, the changes that were made to this by law. Yes. This is all in Australia, of course. Can you explain, actually, Sal, what, what was going yeah. on here? So, basically, the case is the first very specific sex versus gender identity case of this magnitude. It is the what is a woman case yeah. because, um, obviously, you have gender identity in law now in Australia and then you've got, like, gender recognition here, but it's, it's quite different here to how it is in Australia. Um, now... What happened is in 2013, the Australian Sex Discrimination Act was amended. This was under Julia Gillard's government. And the definition of sex was taken out, as were the definitions of men and women. And what was put in was gender identity. Right. And it was given a, a definition, but it, the, the definition is effectively gender identity is gender identity. Like They don't explain what it is. Mm. Something mm. about your gender identity is mannerisms. And you're like, what, what does this even mean? Like, mm. And, you know, I don't have a gender identity. I don't. Most people don't have a gender identity. So what they did is they created a conflict because gender identity is in direct conflict with sex because the people who claim to have one, it's going to be the opposite of what their sex is. So it will be a man claiming to be a woman or a woman claiming to be a man. Then you actually have all of the other like neo-genders. You've got like you know non-binary, cloud gender, astro gender, like just these ridiculous you know, things that they've invented that aren't real. They're just imaginations at yeah. best. Yeah. Um, so basically, it seems like there's this plan to have gender identity supersede sex in law. That seems to be the intention. I know that because the Australian Human Rights Commission, who, you know, the, where the, that's where the complaint initially was, they have actually intervened in the case as amicus curiae, which is quite normal for the Australian Human Rights Commission to do. They have a statutory right to do it. They are the fr- So amicus curiae is friend of the court, so they're there to interpret the law. In their application to intervene in the case, they, so they said, yes, there is a, a conflict of sex and gender, and then they have proceeded to solve that problem with gender. Yeah. So they're solving the problem with the problem, which just simply does not work, yeah, exactly. obviously. Yeah. Um, so while the case is tickle v giggle, it is also effectively me versus the government yeah. because the government is saying men are women and basically everyone has to believe that and act upon that. And you're like, well, this is impossible and this is nonsense. So part of our defense is a constitutional challenge. And the reason for that is that the Australian Sex Discrimination Act is based on CEDAW, which is the convention that you were referencing. So it's CEDAW is, I've got to actually properly get learn what this is I always, I've tried I always forget because it doesn't spell CEDAW like the the acronym's wrong but it's basically the convention of the elimination of discrimination against women and girls right um it's a UN convention it was it's signed by 189 countries in the world like the only countries that haven't signed it are the ones you'd expect that have not signed it where women's rights are completely non-existent um and what is quite unique about Australia is that Australia um incorporated it into law you know, in full, it, it, it just put it into law. So we, CEDAW was um, created in 1979. Australia signed it in 1983. Our Sex Discrimination Act um, was created in 1984. So we basically, we, we signed it and then we enlivened it in our law. And CEDAW is a document of, about biology, like biology. It's, it, yep. it is mm-hmm. female. It's like biological sex. This is, you can't really dispute that. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they'll try it, but you can't. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Facts are facts. Um, so because these amendments came in and they put gender identity in, which gender identity isn't in C- CEDAW, there's a very strong argument to be made that the amendments themselves are unconstitutional. They shouldn't be there in the first place. 
that basically sex needs to have the definition because we're in a situation where like the sex we've got the sex discrimination act and we're supposed to accept that discrimination and act have established definitions but sex doesn't yeah and part yeah. of the reason for that is that they want to create this new concept called legal sex legal sex legal sex to have that trump biological sex yeah, yeah. legal sex is essentially that's that's gender identity but again, your legal sex would only, if you have a legal sex and you want to use legal sex, it's because your legal sex is the opposite of your biological sex. Mm -hmm. So it just, the only people who are benefiting from this are actually the men who claim to be women. Mm -hmm. Because women's rights have all been based on, they're called sex-based rights because they're based on needs that, that are dictated by our biological sex. So that, you know, it's maternity leave and all of these things that are very specific to women. A lot of the people in, say, this trans and gender diverse community, they actually also rely on their sex-based rights. That's how females with a gender identity play sports still, because most of them, like I'm talking 99.9% .9 of them, play in female sports teams because they can't compete with the men because of the reality of biological sex. Yeah. Then also the non-binary non people, they rely on their sex-based rights when they need those specific rights. So while you could have gender identity in some part of law, say in t terms of like a freedom of belief type thing, because I think anyone can think whatever they want about themselves in a free society, having it in the Sex Discrimination Act has completely muddled it and created this conflict completely unnecessarily. So it's like either they, the plan was really quite sinister and they planned to completely remove women's rights or it was done out of utter incompetence and they just never even thought about it because you would only, it takes seconds to go, oh, hang on, men can claim to be women. What does that do? For, that destroys women's spaces and sports, yes, which is exactly. part of the whole yeah. reason the act exists yes, exactly. for, to stop discrimination against women. The whole thing is incredibly regressive, isn't it? For women, it seems we've had, we interviewed someone called Sharon Davis, mm -hmm. Olympic uh, swimmer. Mm -hmm. I've watched that interview. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. And also uh, casting in stock. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole movement, it seems to be pro, basically pro men, mm -hmm. and men sort of essentially moving into these sort of areas. In fact, there's been a case recently, we just mentioned it before we came on air, um, with Planet Fitness, mm -hmm. which is where, this, this, this big group of gyms, I guess. Isn't it? Yeah, it's and, in, I think in America, yeah, it's a big like... Um, yeah, well, I mean, in Australia we have, I think we have Planet Fitness actually in Australia yeah. even as well, but like a but, chain, a franchise. But their kind of, uh, their their value has suddenly plummeted because uh, some woman there did actually complain about an obvious man in the changing room and they refused to kind of take a case on board. They just sort of stuck to their guns and said, no, no this is Well, fine. they cancelled her membership. Oh, really? Yes, right. they cancelled her membership. It's a really interesting um, situation, actually. I... I sort of commented today and I was like, oh, apparently now there's 400 million reasons why you should have yeah. female only spaces. Yes, yeah. I just thought there was one. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Um, because I, I, it sort of dawned on me recently that because I created a digital female only space. And so I had the power to sort of remove these men in a very safe way that kind of, un I unknowingly walked into being able to be in this position where one of them would, could maybe come back and like, legally come after me because in real life female only spaces women self-exclude they get themselves out of yeah. that because it's we're, we're scared yes. like if you've got a man in a female only space like a bathroom or a change room you are already dealing with somebody who ha does has no respect for your boundaries mm. so you, there's an argument to be made you're already dealing with a predator mm. because good men just don't go in mm -hmm. to female only spaces. They mm -hmm. understand the social contract. They leave them alone. It wouldn't even occur to a good man, which is most men, obviously. Mm -hmm. Female only spaces literally exist to protect us from the men who want to go into them. Yeah. That's yeah. why, like, we've always had to have some sort of boundary there. Um, and, you know, it's the thing. It's um, good men stay out, so bad men stand out. So with... Planet Fitness, I mean, this woman was really brave. She took a photo and then, but they said that that was, you know, against their rules of her. Well, she took it. She took evidence of, of this man shaving in there yes. and they've punished her. It's obviously a man. I mean, it's he's, just, I mean, he's a man. He's just, he's 
And it, 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 could, it could be you, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. it's just a guy. The difference, though, and the, a huge difference, of course, is, is one, one of the reasons you're here, mm -hmm. is that this is a, would be a legal change, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. this, this is why the implications are so big, aren't they? Yes, so because we're engaging CEDAW, and because that's what Australia's Sex Discrimination Act is based on, the implications for the for the case like the verdict will be felt yeah. globally mm -hmm. by those 189 countries mm -hmm. so the it's this is the uk we're talking about and canada which is also you know just tranada is what it's called yeah right <laughs> now yeah. um <laughs> yeah <laughs> um new zealand i make mean, lots of europe um basically the case will be able to be cited mm -hmm. for women to be able to get their sex-based rights back in those countries as well. So just recently, as I was preparing to come over here, I was, I was told, do mention that basically if we lose, women's rights cease to exist in international law. That's what's at stake. Yeah. Because it would be that CEDAW is not for women and girls. Like it's just, it would be changing everything. <laughs> I was took my breath away. I was like, I just wanted to create an app. <laughs> yeah. I've never, I didn't want this. I it didn't want this question. You, you actually sort of say, yes, it, 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 one could have seen it for, you know, coming maybe because of a safe, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a women's changing room or something mm -hmm. like that. But actually, yes, it, it, you've actually got, it's come from a very strange, well, life is like that, isn't it? It so. is. I mean, it's one of those situations that I actually could not have blindly created something so perfect yeah. to be a target yeah. for this. I've just, I walked into it just with a target on my back. I had no idea that any of this was going on. As I said, I didn't even know what the word turf meant. I had to Google it to find out. Can you tell me, you said, uh, because you were in Los Angeles mm -hmm. around this time, weren't you a uh, 2018? I went back to Australia <coughs> in 2018. So I was there from 2009 to 2018. Right. So the Me Too movement was mm -hmm. raging during that time. Um, what is their position on this kind of thing? Do you, do you, or do they have one even? The Me Too movement has been utterly infiltrated by trans activists. Right. So that they, they are now, um, so what was a movement for a woman to have boundaries is now a movement, it's now the opposite. It's right. now taking away women's boundaries. Because I don't think it's an accident that gender ideology replaced Me Too. I don't, mm. there was, I think there was a lot of people in powerful positions that really didn't want Me Too to be as powerful and gain the traction that it did. Right. And it was, you know, it was the biggest sort of step forward that women had had in quite a long time of just solving that one, you know, that one other issue that really needed to be addressed. Because I, Me Too, I experienced it. I was in Hollywood. It was as bad as they say. Yes. Um, yes. Still is, as far as I heard. <laughs> Nothing's yeah. changed. Just yeah. bigger insurance premiums. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, to get that off the front page, along comes this very convenient new movement where there's no such thing as a woman. And if you have boundaries, you're a bigot. Mm -mm. And I just, it, it, it is quite unsettling and disorientating to go from that to that. I don't know if I've even completely found like my ground with it yet. Cause I just, I spend a lot of time going, I cannot believe that this is happening. It's, it sounds, it's just too weird. It's too yes. stupid. It's preposterous. Like when I first, when we first came under attack, I remember saying to my mom, I'm like, this will be over in a few months. Like we'll just ride it out. It'll be over in a few months because I honestly thought yeah. they're saying men are women. This is so stupid. No, no one's going along with this. Turns out they are. So, so the situation generally, when it comes to being gender critical or the trans movement in Australia. Is it worse in Australia, would you yes. say, than here? I actually think and Australia it... is the most captured country in the world. Really? Yes, because even New Zealand, which was we were sort of on par with New Zealand, they now, they've got a new government now who is being pretty reasonable and logical and sort of getting this stuff out. They were getting like gender stuff out of schools and things. They're on the right track at least. Um, and even in Canada, Tranada, which for a while ever, we were, it was like, that's the worst. But they now have, they're sort of building this robust political opposition to it, which mm. could could potentially win. I think it's next year their elections yeah, are. Yeah. We have none of that in Australia. There is a few brave politicians speaking up. There's um, Moira Deeming, um, Alex Antic, um, Claire Chandler, a few others. Um, uh, Louise Elliott's another one. But in terms of media... We've got Sky News that will occasionally do stories on it. Yeah, and the Australian yeah. newspaper occasionally will, but 
they're quite frustrating because I just don't feel that they actually understand the issue. And so, and if you don't understand it, it's like you've got to go and get, understand it, otherwise you're just going to confuse more people with it. So you're doing this in Australia in a very hostile environment. Very. Right? So, I mean, are you optimistic? I know you've got to be optimistic. <laughs> You know, I'm like the eternal optimist. I really am. And this has very much tested it. But I just sit there going, I'm being taken to court for knowing that a man is a man and acting upon that, mm -hmm. which is that's basic human instinct and behavior. And so it, you know, no one should be punished for that. Mm -hmm. um, I also very firmly believe in freedom of belief. Mm -hmm. um, I, I defend Roxy Tickle's right to freedom of belief that he can believe he's a woman just as much as my freedom of belief that I don't have to believe that. I think that they are both, and they, they, they can coexist mm. very, very well. He can, I wish him well living his life. Just please stay out of female only spaces in sport. That's all I'm asking. Yeah. Um, it is quite, ex it's quite extraordinary the speed, the speed with which this has happened, but also, you know, and I'm, I'm talking very broadly here, obviously, but the absolute vindictiveness, yes. it seems to me, of this trans activity movement. I mean, it, it, they say the process is the punishment, and it mm. is. You're just constantly being punished. I mean, be, as I said before, being called a bigot for having boundaries, being called a, a mm. bigot and, and oh, right, and all of these nonsense terms that yeah. have been created yeah. purely because you just know the truth. Mm. Like, I, I say this all the time, that this is stupider than flat earthers. Because we have flat earthers, while well, it's a nonsense belief to have yeah. right now, um, one, they're not forcing it upon anyone like this. But once upon a time, humans actually didn't know what shape the planet was. Yeah. But even then, they knew the difference between male and female. They knew yeah. it was two sexes and no one could change sex. It is yeah. Yeah. the most fundamental thing that we know. And that's why it is so dangerous and terrifying. And that's why it's just destabilizing all of society. Because if you, are, if you are forcing people to believe that males are females and females can be males, what else can they get you to believe? Because I think at that point, it's a free for all. If you give up that, that such like blatant bit of truth, that you're going to, you'll never get it back. Well, quite. I mean, it's an attack on very sense of being, isn't it? You're very mm -hmm. sense of yourself. Um, I mean, this is a big question, really. Um, or maybe, uh, I mean, it's too broad, but, you know, Sal, what would you look at, like, Canada, America, here? We have these, here, we do have these sort of victories. I mean, mm -hmm. you might have heard about the puberty blocker situation mm -hmm. here with the uh, NHS, um, you know, they're being banned. It's good. But generally speaking, the drift of things seems to be very, very sort of pro-trans activism. Um, why do you think it's happened in these countries? Why do you think it's happened in... Look, we all... You know, this is basically mm -hmm. the English-speaking... What they call the Anglosphere, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I don't even know how far this has got maybe in Europe. Oh, it's, it's pretty bad in Europe, in Spain especially. Actually, it's quite funny because the st everything that the women have been saying would happen is happening in Spain. So they've just... They introduced self-ID. Men can just go and change their identity documents from mm. male to female. And all of these um, men are using it to get all these different family benefits mm. and whatnot that were exclusive for women. Um, mm. They're also, um, the story just came out today, actually, a bunch of men in Spain who are either being charged with domestic violence or in domestic violence situations, and the women are in domestic violence shelters, and the men have changed their legal documents mm -hmm. to be able to go into the domestic violence shelters where the women are. We've all known this is what would happen, mm -hmm. because bad men will do anything, and they'll, but like, they'll take any loophole you mm -hmm. give them. And that's why we've, we've had to have like, these strong boundaries in yeah. place like it's why there's had to be laws specifically for female only spaces because they are really necessary for women for women's equality in society mm -hmm. male only spaces don't need to be protected in law as much i am for male only spaces for like recreation and socialization i think that, i think it's really healthy to sort of spend time like just with the guys and you know, just with hanging out with women i think that's fine i don't think it's a controversial thing um but male only spaces like say a male only gym for example mm -hmm. 
It's easy to create because you just make it intimidating to women and they won't go in. We'll self-exclude from those places, mm -hmm. but you create something that's just for women and you have to have safeguarding in place because the moment it's just for women, the men want to go in it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of always been the case. We've always known oh, yes, there are bad yes. men. Like, the, yeah. um, there, there's, there's documentary, documentaries about this, there's books. Literally, for sex offenders, the first thing most of them do is voyeurism in public bathrooms. This is completely understood. Right. Now they've just changed laws that have allowed them to do that. And if we see a man in there, we are the bad ones. We get in trouble. This is gaslighting on a scale I've, I've not seen. Yeah. It's, the other thing as well, which is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but what I can understand is that a lot of people actually misunderstand the word trans. When, when you say trans woman, uh, essentially many of these guys do not even bother with any kind of reassignment surgery or anything like that. Um, you know? Yeah, I mean, most don't, but I will say, um, I mean, there's no reassignment that happens. Sex yeah. doesn't change. Yes, exactly. I think that anyone can go and get cosmetic surgery if they want, That's because that is just what it is. But I don't think that a man who has taken hormones and had a boob job or removed his genitalia is any more a woman mm. than a guy who's just self-declaring it. The whole yeah. thing is self-ID. Yeah, yeah. um, you know, whatever effort that they're going to, that's their business. Mm. I, mean, I mean, if that's what you want to do, to a point I'm like, okay, but I think that there are some things like, there's, there's some things where, you know, you're just changing your body in such an unhealthy way mm. that, you know, sh there is a big question of should that be allowed? It's mm. like, you know, there is the do no harm principle in medicine. And then yeah. there's also, you know, it's not like we go, oh, people can get lobotomies if they want, you know, body autonomy. No, lobotomies are bad. Yes. So sexual lobotomies are uh, bad too, which is yeah. essentially what they are. Yeah. They're just, they are removing the healthy organs from very vulnerable people yeah. for no reason. Also, yes, I think, you know, the point is often made, but, you know, maybe, maybe not so long in the future, she, People will look back and think, how the hell did we allow this stuff to happen, actually? Yeah. I mean, also the effect it has on uh, gay people. And, yes. you know, there, there's this uh, saying, you know, about the, we have the Tavistock Clinic here, you probably know all of it. Mm -hmm. But, that, you know, apparently the staff used to joke there and say soon there won't be any gay people left. You know, yeah. Because a huge number of people coming forward for wanting to change, uh, trans, uh, transition, were in fact gay, young gay people. People, I, it's know. one of the things that scares me the most because the trans, gender ideology is incredibly homophobic. It's misogynistic mm -hmm. and it's very, very homophobic. And I think that when we have all won and it is the thing of the past, which it eventually will be, zeitgeists do change. Mm -hmm. Like it is a horrible fad, bad ideologies. You push back enough, eventually they go yeah. away. Women will be able to move on and I don't like there won't be sort of harm to our reputation so to speak but I'm really fearful of the of basically the LGB community being held responsible for this mm. when it's not their fault if this is not like a oh they let, let gay marriage in so look at where we are now this is against that stuff this is oh, saying yes. that homosexuality yeah. doesn't exist yes yeah. Yeah, I suppose the problem, the only problem is, you're quite right, the only, the only problem is, is that the established kind of gay movement here, I mean, all publications have fully taken all of this on, it seems to me. Yeah, yeah I think that there was just a lot of professional activists who yeah. after marriage yeah. was passed, they had nothing left to do, which they had lots to do. They actually could have gone to all of the other countries where homosexuality is still illegal and gone and done, they implemented the success they'd had here over there. But they, they didn't. Ab they no, chose this. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. But absolutely, if they don't, but also that would, they would be worried, worrying then about being called racist in that case, I think. Um, maybe. <laughs> I think also, um, you know, there wasn't much money in that. There's a lot of money in gender ideology, mm. lots of it, mm. because it's pharmaceutical based. Speaking of money, actually, mm. I mean, this thing must cost you a fortune. Yeah. So yeah. how's that? You've got a crowdfunding. We've got a crowdfunding, yes. So basically, because we're doing a constitutional challenge, that makes it a bit more expensive. But litigation is expensive anyway. Um, it's $500,000. 500, right. Yeah, that's so 500,000 Australian dollars. Yeah. Um, we've raised 250,000 so far from the generosity of people all around the world with big and small donations. Like I will be forever grateful for it because 
And the only way I can rep repay everybody is by going like, well, we'll work really hard and we'll get the rights back. Yeah. Um, we've got $250,000 to go, which is very, very nerve wracking. If we lose in federal court and we have to go to the high court, it will be another five hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, what can? How can people? Who? Because when we've had people fighting cases, and you, mm -hmm. this is just incredibly important mm -hmm. stuff. You know, I mean, I can't emphasise it enough. Uh, for what is a woman? You know, this is the point. This yeah. is the crucial thing. If people really want to help you, so they can go to your crowdfunding page. Yeah, so gigglecrowdfund.com. There's more information about the right. case there. We do do updates. There hasn't been an update in a while just because it's been just lawyers putting everything together behind the scenes. So there hasn't been any um, uh, update, but the case will be in two and a half weeks. So there'll be more updates um, then. So there's all the information there. Um, we are expecting a verdict mid-year mm. and then we'll go from there. Hopefully it's a great verdict yeah. and I get to move on with my life and just run a female only app. Like that's yes, all I want yes. to do. And to put it into perspective, the time frame, I got the human rights complaint when I was 15 weeks pregnant. My daughter will be two in July. Nice. If we go to the high court, we'll get a verdict from there when she's about three. Yeah. So it's, it's been a long time. Have you, how is that, um, been actually i mean for you it... it's so stressful i mean I've, I've, I've got a bald spot now i've lost hair from stress really? yeah i mean it's, it's the stress of the whole thing it's the raising the money i mean you when you're tasked with raising more money than most people earn in a year yeah, so yeah, it's so it's cool. it's a yeah. huge task um and that in itself is sort of a full-time job and but no matter how hard it's gotten and i've had times where i've had big breakdowns and gotten pretty down about it but I just look at this like adorable little girl mm. and I'm just like, I cannot mm. sit back and, and just expect her to go out into the world where she has no rights, that yeah. she is, that she couldn't say no to a man, basically. Mm. That is the one most important thing to teach girls mm. is that they are allowed to have boundaries. And I, I cannot have it that that is illegal for her to have boundaries. Absolutely no way. But as you say, it is, uh, it's a 24 hour job, isn't it? Yes. And and a very very successful one, but the thing is, uh, everything, most important things are the most difficult, aren't they? Yes, like. The, and also it your life thing... will change quite a lot after yeah. the case, won't it? Yes, um, it's one of those things where you go like, yes, like you know, the thing, anything that's worth it isn't easy, and yeah. you can sit there and say all of that, but then you go, it, this is just what about what a woman is. We all know. Oh yes. Like yeah, it, it, it's yeah. just so stupid. It's like yeah. we're literally putting in all of this effort and fighting mm. this, and it's so hard mm. for something that is so obvious. Mm. Like the person taking me to court is a man. Mm. He is. He can think whatever he wants about himself, but objectively speaking, of fact and evidence, he is a adult human male. Mm. And if that is something that bothers him or anyone else of that community, like. I mean, I can have sympathy to a point. I'm a bit past that now, but yeah, yeah. but I I, yeah. I can understand. I don't want anyone to be distressed, but I'm like, you have to go and deal with that. You mm. cannot go and f you know basically put your distress on other people and make it their problem. That's not how it works. No, uh, one's attitude can harden, you know, over a period of time, can't they? About this, yeah. it, in the sense that you just think, you know, essentially when you also, as I said, you're in a very very hostile mm -hmm. environment. When most of the establishment, you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, I hope not the judiciary in Australia, <laughs> yeah. but you know what I mean. It's mm -hmm. essentially arranged and ranged against you. Uh, that, that's yeah, right. you get, I try and keep a sense of humor about it. Like my mum and I do laugh quite often and just go, like, what are the odds yeah. of creating an app for women in the one time in human <laughs> history where yeah. no one knows what a woman is? Yeah. You just, I, I couldn't have timed it. Was like, if, We'd even launched this about two or three years beforehand in the height of Me Too. It would be in a completely different situation. I just, I just didn't know that this was going on. I would have made some different decisions. I'm not sure what they would be, but I'm sure I would have made some different decisions had I known this was going on. Well, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and look, people, uh, if you want to uh, contribute to crowdfunding for Sal, Sal's case, uh, which would be really worthwhile cause uh, we'll put it under the this video where you can go it's crowdfunder yeah, thank yeah. you so much and uh, look thank you very much for coming thank you and thank you for 
for coming to see us during a, a short time. Mm-hmm. In, in no, thank you so much for having me. I yeah. hope that eventually one day we get to talk because we're having a conversation about, yes. let's talk about how you won. <laughs> that will be a really fun conversation. I'm, I'm very excited you, for it. Thank you very much. Sal. Thank you. Um, Sal, for that. Uh, we shall see you next week, okay? And uh, in the meantime, have a lovely week. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as £3 per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember, to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.